all uh, stories, interviews that modern day Native Americans have told her of not just encounters with UFOs, but encounters with aliens. Mostly they occur way out on the reservation in a very isolated area on an isolated road. Or she have me the first book. While yeah, let me do that. <clears throat> we'll show this. Here you go, Beta. And if you are new to this whole subject of UFOs and alien encounters, I, I highly up. recommend her books because they're easy reads. Um, there's probably about 20 chapters in each book. Each one is a different person talking about their family's encounters or their individual encounters, including Vietnam veterans, police officers, um, other professors, uh, elders, 97-year-old elders who have no reason to lie to anybody, telling stories about their personal encounters. Some of them are lifelong encounters, repeated. Some of them come from the 1940s. She started collecting stories in around 1990 and already has had three full books like this. And I'm sure she has and more. When did she start seeing or have get, getting these stories? Sorry? It's been a while. I mean, has she been when doing did this? She, well, when did the stories begin? I mean, when did she start? She started collecting them around 1990. Oh, okay. And she always tape records the person, none of these people are looking for notoriety. She disguises their names and their locations because none of these people, many of them are afraid that they will lose their jobs. There's uh, police officers with the um, the reservation police force yeah. that have seen things and teachers and things like that. But I... That's a big problem. I, I yeah, it is. I've been researching that too. A lot of professionals get yeah. into a lot of trouble, especially police. Yeah. And there's actually a reporting center now for just police. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I can understand yeah. that. And the reason I brought this up right now is because one of her stories is called um, Balls of Light and Little Boys. And it's about a woman and her, her husband built a home for them, a uh, beautiful home for them, but quite isolated out on the reservation. Uh, they moved in and immediately she started seeing balls of light. And uh, then she found out a couple weeks later that her boys were playing with the balls of light. Wow. <laughs> yes, yes, and uh, quite a remarkable story. But even for her, her husband didn't want to know anything about it, and it's just a taboo subject that she has to now keep from her husband. And that I know that happens to a lot of oh, yeah. people. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the one that exactly. I investigated. You uh, could hold that one up. She's been telling me that her and her husband are having a big rift over this thing. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Two sightings. Mm -hmm. Yes. Over a period of two weeks and just changed your whole life. You yeah, and that happens in the Bigfoot community too. Right. Yeah, you know, all of that. Um, yeah, I was just talking um, about one of the first books I ran across when I first had this, you know, experience with the Sasquatch was, um, I forget the first one, but um, Kelly yeah. Lutzer, yeah. Kalani Lutzeritis um, has two books, and one's this psychic. The Bigfoot and their psychic connection, and then the other one's the UFO connection, you know, um, where he takes down lots of different witnesses um, and their stories and, and how, it, you know, what they go through. Okay, let's, let's get some details for these folks to be able to catch up on how this book um, is put together, but it says, uh, Following her best-selling book, Encounters with Star People, which told of the stories of those living on the reservation, Artie Six Killer Clark's new book details the UFO stories of American Indians who live off the reservation. That's an interesting little tidbit from the back of the book. And let me just go through two or three of the chapters to kind of whet your uh, appetite here. A UFO crash on the Southwestern Reservation. They are my obsession. These are chapter headings. There are many alien species. There we go. That's Whoa. that Artie Six Killer Clark. Thank Whoa, you, Artie. great, great uh, book review on Thank that you. one. Thank you. Awesome. And we are moving along, folks. We're not just going to stick with one or two books. We got to get some other other ones out here. Who's next? I'll go next. 
Thank you very much, Brad. I've got a good one here. It's uh, Does It Rain in Other Dimensions? And uh, oh, 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 oh. And there's a, <laughs> is that the title to the book? Yeah, that's the title. And, and you're, you're quoting some quotes, and there's one here, and it says uh, the first quote by Apophic of Nar Narada. Anyway, it says, Never utter these words, Cohen's quote, I do not know this, therefore it is false. One must study to know, know to understand, understand to judge. We could use those words of wisdom nowadays. And here's the, yeah, here's the, the cover. It's really, <coughs> okay, okay this really. is, uh, is it, Does it rain wrong? in other dimensions? A true story of alien encounters by Mike Orham. And he's from England, and he he first gets his uh, he's all, he's had encounters. <laughs> He's had encountered his, in his personal life, and then he finally gets connected with people, kind of like what I did here. And they, but this is years ago, 70s, and then he gets connected with people who are also seeing things in England, which seem to be just rampant over there. Oh yeah. According to that there's, book, there's a lot going there's on. There's a over lot there. over there, and it's yeah. Wiltshire, which is the uh, county of the uh, all know. the crop circles. And all yeah, that. I don't know what. But it's England. You know, that's England. One, maybe that's why maybe. you have such a large audience yeah. of folks that watch the yeah. UFO IP because uh, in in the UK and Europe we're we're uh, we got a lot of folks out there. So I want to shout out to all you folks out there in Western Europe. Thank you for watching. The back of this book. Let me just read this real quick because it's fascinating. It says we have neighbors in the universe. Does it rain in other dimensions describes one man's experience of communicating and working with other dimensional and extraterrestrial beings over a 50 year period. Whoa. It's about our age, I think, or a little older, but yeah. I don't know. Amazing. <laughs> Pretty close. Very nice. It's got to be a baby boomer then. That's yeah. Our category. Oh my gosh, it's uh, got some photographs in here of uh, depictions of. And he with did a it. biomechanical. Talk about when well, yeah. you just said that. That's really a biomechanical weird. being. You want to show that for the folks? That's really weird. That's it, a cool. That's picture. supposed to be an underwater spacecraft where he gets put in. So it's kind of weird. But the story is just very interesting. interesting. Unbelievable. Well, thank you, Brad. That's a great book. Yeah. Does it well, rain in other dimensions? That's, uh, just to go along with that, the mm -hmm. idea of uh, of people good. Yeah, communicating with lights and uh, those types of things are very, very well known in, in, in folklore of, of Britain for a very, very long time. They just interpret it as fairies or, or as uh, harbingers of something. Yeah. A lot of times, uh, different lights are, are meant to, you know, uh, you know, uh, make people aware of certain events that are going to happen. So that's yeah, that's a very very common thing that people do experience, and as well with Britain, I think a lot of times people are going to um, uh, they're going to uh, holy places um, and cities yeah. which are ley lines. Ley lines, yeah. Yeah, so Stonehenge, mm -hmm. and basically, if your church is old enough in Britain, it was built on a sacred holy ley line spot. So you can yeah. basically tell where the church is where where the holy spots are based on where the church is. Well there, there was a town in Great Britain where there were hundreds of yeah. people citing a UFO and the government, yeah. government totally covered it up. Yeah. And they totally killed the story and yeah. everything. Yeah. Well this is where this is where Roslyn Chapel is at one corner of the Scottish UFO Triangle. There is a Scottish oh, yeah, UFO yeah. triangle? Yes. Yeah. Kind of like the, uh, the, the, uh, Bermuda. Bermuda. the Bermuda Triangle? Yeah. About UFOs. Fantastic. What's, what's the other corner? Do we know? Uh, I, I don't know. I think to be honest, the Roslyn right Chapel is definitely one corner. Huh? Yeah, I know that because I've spoken to a lot of people who have gone to Roslyn Chapel. And uh, they, they, there was a lot of, there's been a lot of sightings of UFOs in the fields just outside of it. So, mm -hmm. um, if you, if you look it up, I'm sorry, I'm having to say. Normally, what I do is I look it up on my phone and I turn it, and it yeah. makes it sound like I know it. Because you're, because you're a radio guy. You but you may, know. but you wow. may, you may be turning it off. Yeah. So, <laughs> sorry, buddy. so he, he has a time uh, loss, and he has regressed by hypnosis, and this is the figures here of what he actually saw. He thought he saw a farmer and his wife and a little child and oh, in, in hypnotism. Those were the figures that came out in the hypnotic 
what he recalled, which was, were aliens. They weren't, and he was by Area 51 at the time, believe it or not. Right. He was investigating Area 51, yeah. and he got oh. kind of in trouble over there. And so Are you serious? Story. He came up with this yeah. kind of uh, depiction. And his wife also. While he was in Area 51. His wife also, not just him. Oh, my goodness. So it's both of them. Well, I like the picture on the front. Now, that's a very unique alien right there. That is very unusual. Yeah, it's like a lily. Yeah, yeah. The alien looks like a cone head with a with a vampire. Just for the people on the radio. Oh, that's yeah. right. yeah. I just look like a cone head kind of with well, extra cones. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that, Fred. That is awesome. Now it is an awesome uh, book. As we go through these books, if something pops into your brain that's very um Related to that, or or the, the, you think I know something? But keep go ahead and jump in there and stuff, and then we're going to go to Ray next and have now, her go through another book. It kind of has to do with what Lee was bringing up. I actually saw an actual image of something that one of the SPS missions encountered, and it was back when they were putting what live stream. Who encountered? Uh, it was one of the shuttle missions. The shuttle the mission, early nineties. Okay. The, they used to just uplink them to most of the radio or to the uh, TV. Stations, right? right. And the producers when there were live, yeah. Well, yeah, when they used to be live. I think in '96 they stopped doing them live. But and this one producer went public and he said that yeah, he picked up a and it was just conversation between them and uh, the astronauts and who were the astronauts? The mission control. Okay. And the astronauts and the video. I mean, you're seeing them. They're having trouble with the door. The door is like stuck. I think I brought this up before, but they can't get the shuttle door open to get okay. out to the bay. Okay. And then all of a sudden, there's this like light that starts to shimmy outside the door. I mean, it's like a lightning bolt. It's just in, and they're like, "Well, what we're, they, they tell them get get away from the door. There's there's some sort of electrical discharge or something." And then they go, "It's in here." Oh, like that. And then the, inside the space shuttle. And, the spa and then the door opens. Oh. Yeah. Yes, it's all on film. It's all on video. I watched it. I was blown away. I was just, and this producer who has a public television station in British Columbia. And he's he, he himself is just beside himself. You know, he's gone through so many hours and hours and hours, and finally he sees this thing. He's like, "Oh my God, there's something going on." This was a NASA broadcast that was yeah sent out over, but no one picked it up until he found it again. He, well, he what he would do was he would record it while he was doing a television show. Got it. And then at night he'd come home and review what went on during the day. Oh my God! That's what he did for. Since the beginning, since like this the eighties, like Rob from Two Hours, yeah, our buddy. <laughs> so he'd go through and review he UFOs on and, on tape, and then and but I guess it. he didn't he didn't go public with it. He uh, actually uh, was concerned about you know what it meant. And he con I think he contacted NASA and everything. And they said yeah. it was nothing. It was nothing. Because yeah, yeah. Well, you guys are talking about it on the camera, sure. you know. There you go. And it's videotaped. It's all videotaped. There's no way you could do some sort of trick with this, and it, it's just totally obvious that there's something up there. I like that. Something helping them. Or helping Another them. space shuttle story. Another yeah, director for true. today. <laughs> Leyland Melvin. Melvin? Yes. Yeah. 54, he was an engineer. He was on the space shuttle. He was in the bay, outer space, and he saw some organic whatever alien. He couldn't describe it very well, but it didn't have arms legs. But it's on the Drudge Report today. Serious engineer. So this was an old report uh, of a sh no, space shuttle thing? Or is this... I don't... He told... In the article, he told NASA about it, and they kind of half blew it off. Now he's coming out in the news today on the Drudge Report talking about it. Oh, this astronaut. Yes. Is he probably astronaut retired? engineer. He's 54. He's retired. He's, he's retired. Done. So now he can talk about it. Maybe. Good point. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We'll see if he's well, well, yeah. he's he's getting his attention. <laughs> <laughs> you heard they've had to clean the outside of the space station several oh, times. Oh, yeah. But there's there's organic it's material. on the outside of the space yeah. station. Yeah. Wow. Oh, seriously? Uh, seriously. I've that? seen the videos of that too. Which, so it's, it's algae. Oh, okay. It's algae yeah. that's growing on it. Is that right? They're like, whoa. Algae is this fungus? Is, no, it's from the it's an ocean algae. It's like a saline okay. type okay. of uh, They identified it. They know what it is, but they can't understand how it got from the ocean up there, you know? Yes. This is very bizarre. Yeah. Yes, I was walking. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> it's monkey ass. It answers everything. That's why it was on the shuttle. And spermia, man. That's I that's know. what we're talking exactly. here. So oh, my goodness, let's keep going here. This is getting exciting. I have some more quotes if you want. Well, we will come back. Okay. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go through another book. Heck yeah, we now we're on a roll. I I feel <laughs> that you guys are into it now. This is great. All right, so I have an exciting read. It's the UFO evidence. 
This is actually published in 1964. Okay. This is actually NICAP uh, account. So let me let me just backtrack here. Let me set the scene let's, here. Let's see who NICAP